Welcome back for more Reddit story videos. Today we have several entitled parent stories for you to enjoy. As always, don't forget to share and like if you enjoyed these videos. Without further ado, here we go. EP calls the cops on us for playing Pokemon Go. Another post about Pokemon Go reminded me of this encounter. When raids were pretty new, me, my boyfriend and about 7 random people were doing a raid. We were all somewhere between 15 and 30. This looks like a group of random people fiercely tapping their phones. The raid happened at a church and we were decent enough to step to the side out of anyone's way. This was not enough for the entitled mom. Entitled mom. Hey, what are you doing here loitering? Random guy, who? Us? Yes, you. Who else? Other random guy. We're playing Pokemon Go. Uh, Po what? Is that one of those violent shooters? I'll call the police. You can't play violent games at a church. Ian walks away furious. We were all like WTF happened just now. As luck would have it, there was a cop walking around and EM found him. He got dragged to us and was very confused to see a group of 9 young adults tapping their phones next to a church. At this point we had beaten the raid and were congratulating each other and celebrating catching the special Pokemon. Us plus random guys. Oh yeah, I got it. Congrats bro. Oh man, I keep missing. Want me to throw it for you? Officer. Now, now, there's no need to throw phones. Guy who made the last comment, uh, what? I offered to throw his Pokeball for him. It's a game. Oh, are you playing Pokemon Go? My son loves that game. EM. They are corrupting my children with their violent games. Uh, madam, I don't appreciate my time being wasted. You told me there was a group of violent youth here. Look at them. How can I walk my children out of the church with them over there being menaces? Uh, we're leaving anyway, so go ahead. And we all dispersed and left the officer to deal with crazy. You must save my son's life, but you cannot shave his beard. Hey guys, I'm back with another wacky EM from the hospital. Not sure whether she is an EM or not, but don't know where else to post it. This didn't happen to me, but to my friend, 22 years old, who's a surgeon in the ENT department. If you think that the EM who almost let a man die was bad, I don't know what you think of this. Please note, this is not meant to offend any religious group. Let's begin. My friend F was having a normal day when a guy was rushed into the ER. He was certainly going in anaphylaxis. If anyone reading this doesn't know what anaphylaxis is, which I doubt, it's a very severe allergic reaction, which can be life-threatening. They initiated the normal process. Administered epinephrine, which is practically adrenaline, put him on oxygen, kept the defibrillator ready in case it went into cardiovascular shock, and asked the people who accompanied the guy, including his mom, who's the EM, what happened. Now, why am I bothering you with these details? The important thing is that he was still having breathing problems after administrating epinephrine, which showed that the case was more severe than it was assumed. So finally they moved him in the OR and decided to perform tracheotomy, making an incision in your throat and inserting a tube in your trachea so you could breathe without using your nose or mouth. The story gets juicy now. This guy was Muslim and had a very long beard, like we need to shave it to save him long. You can see where this is going. I don't know why, but they had the stupidity of telling the guy's mom EM the details that they had to shave him. EM, you know, PD, poor doctor, who doesn't get paid enough for dealing with EMs. EM, what did you say? You're gonna shave my son? Uh, PD, yes, madam. Dr. F, who is operating on him, says it's obstructing the procedure and they don't have much time. Uh, what do you mean? The surgeon is a woman? But women can only be nurses. Of course she wants to shave him, because she's slang for mentally disabled people and doesn't know how to do it. Go and get a male doctor for my son now. PD, you cannot speak about our staff like that. She's a qualified surgeon and I don't think you're understanding, but it's an emergency. Your son could die. I came here to tell you what procedure we're doing and now that I've told it to you, have a good day. PD starts to walk away and EM grabs his shoulder. How dare you walk away? First, you try to get a woman operate on my son and distract him and you want to shave his beard even though you know it's religious? I can sue this hospital for religious intolerance. 
a WTF lady, your son literally cannot breathe. So how the F can he be distracted if he's not doing anything? PD raising his voice, Madam, don't you understand she's trying to save your son's life and you cared more about his beard? It will regrow, but will he become alive again if he dies now? EM sees some logic in it, but is adamant to remain illogical. Alright, I won't sue this hospital, but you must not operate on my son until I go and ask the mullah, priest, if it's okay for him to get shaved and have a woman operate on him. He lives only an hour or so from here, so you must wait while I return. <laughs> I'm laughing my ass off as I'm typing this. Her son is literally choking to death and she doesn't want the doctors to do their job for an hour. Two by the time she returns. PD said the smartest thing in that situation. Do what you want to, madam. It was so smart because he managed to get rid of the EM without actually mentioning they would wait. PD hastily returned to the OR where F had already shaved the guy and started the procedure, since he was also losing blood pressure quickly and had to be put on IV fluids. After the procedure was over, F almost tore PD a new one before he explained what happened. Thankfully, the patient was saved, he was far more logical than his mom and thanked F for not waiting for EM and shaving him to operate on him. As for the EM, she returned almost three and a half hour later and was furious that we've shaved her son without her consent. The son provided his own consent after he recovered, but apparently EM was the mom and knew the best thing for her son and her consent was indispensable. Woman, your son is old enough to have kids of his own. She filed a complaint against F for religious discrimination and intolerance and against the management for letting a woman operate on her son. But I'm sure the CEO guy scrapped her piece of toilet paper without reading it. Edie and his trash girlfriend steal my boyfriend's house because he didn't even want it. Our cast, me, obviously. BF, my boyfriend, owner of the house, BD, boyfriend's dad. He isn't in story but is referenced a few times, purchased the house for us. ED, entitled dad, TG, his trash girlfriend, cop, the best police officer ever, effing, incredible guy, went out of his way to help with our case from beginning to end. Shout out to Officer Parker. Backstory. BD came into some fortune about half a year ago and bought a house for me and BF. BD and BF want me very involved in the process, as I have dealt heavily with real estate in the past. So I recommended cost, neighborhood, specific house to look at, etc. We settled on a beautiful three bedroom, two bathroom, a Valgo BF sublet a bedroom in our house for only $300 a month to two of his very good or so he fought friends, a man aged 30, ED, and a woman aged 21, TG. I hated them and had heard terrible things about both of them. They were very rude and entitled and also both have disgusting criminal records, especially the man. But whatever, I absolutely do not blame BF for trying to be a good friend. Maybe I had misunderstood these people and I was willing to give them a chance. Also important to know that ED had three kids with a woman that is not TG, but lost them due to several charges of both child abuse and domestic abuse, trespassing, etc. It took maybe a week before ED and TG started getting very entitled. Never cleaned a single thing, left huge messes everywhere, smoked pot 24 7 in the house, constantly let the cat out on accident and blamed us for setting it free on purpose. Never paid a single dime of rent in their three months there. Also didn't mow the lawn, clear snow from sidewalks even though they agreed to in the lease. ED quit his job as an excuse to not pay rent, TG never had a job because she's too pretty to work. About a month later, they started treating me and BF like shit. They let his cats outside and lost them on purpose, threw all our shit on the floor on the garage and into his old dirty ass farm truck, which hadn't been used for a month as the farm had been sold. Changed the locks and locked us out of the house, etc. They were served with multiple notices and evictions and left after a lot of effort and heated debate. Once we had noticed they left, BF had asked me to change the locks immediately and move our stuff back in while he was at work. The next day, ED and TG came back and set up camp while we were gone. As we hadn't moved all our furniture yet and we are still staying elsewhere, 
they had only a blow up mattress, a couple of suitcases and some laundry in the washing machine in an effort to make it seem like they had never actually left. They ripped the nuked locks out and changed them once again and threw all our stuff back into the garage, damaging multiple high cost items. We talked with Cobb and his partner and they agreed that once an evicted tenant leaves, they can be charged for trespassing, breaking and entering if they return, even if they still have a key. So we went to the house and they were still there. We broke in through a window in the garage and at first calmly asked ED and TG to leave. This was a few months ago and was very heated, so I don't remember perfectly, but this was the gist of it. BF, you were served with eviction and chose to leave. You cannot come back now. We will call the police unless you pack up and leave now. This is your last warning. ED, no, we don't have to leave. This is our house. We are renting from you and have every right to be here. My kids are coming to live with me. We are going to start a new life here. I won them in custody battle. Side note, there was no custody battle, obviously. BF, I don't care, you already left and you were served with an eviction. We went to court. Even if you weren't, I never said your kids could live here. The other two rooms are ours. Me, you don't even have your kids. We know that is a lie. No court would give you custody over them when you have no job or residence. Yes, I was a bit of a bitch. This eviction had been going on for months and I was sick of it. TG to BF, you didn't even want this house. BD only bought it for you because you are an effing spoiled and this dumb bitch wanted it. Just let us live here. We walked outside and called the cops. They came immediately as it, as it was a slow Saturday. They went inside and started assessing the situation. ED and TG were obviously scared shitless as they were both on probation and in possession of numerous drugs that are illegal in our state. Cops looks around and it was obvious to them that ED and TG had moved and only came back to be assholes. The following conversation is edited a bit as ED kept interrupting the cops. So I'm leaving out a few things he said so that it can actually be readable. Cop. So you were evicted. You left and the owner changed the locks and moved his property back in, correct? Uh, no, I didn't change the locks. I just took theirs off and put our old ones back on. So you did change the locks? Uh, well, yes, but not really because yes or no, you changed the locks. Technically, but yes or no only. ED looking increasingly nervous, uh, yes. Cop, clearly you moved out. I have all of the paperwork for notices and evictions served to you. You have no right to be here now. Pack up your shit and leave. ED. We didn't move out, we just removed all our stuff and took it to a storage unit. They don't even need the house, BF didn't even effing want it. That dumb cunt did. I have three kids, they will be homeless now. No you do not, I know your record. Grab your shit and leave now. ED starts screaming, getting in the cops faces and making violent hand motions. I'm leaving a few bits of text out of here as it was just pointless and mostly incoherent yelling from ED. The cops had had enough. Cop, get your shit and leave now. ED, no, the court hasn't ruled on it yet, we don't have to leave. True, the court hadn't ruled on it yet, but in our state, if a tenant served with eviction leaves, they cannot come back, even without a court order. Cop, I know the case, I know the law, leave or... No, I know my rights. My kids need this house. Cop, shut up now. If you say one more word, I can and will arrest you for trespassing and breaking and entering. Get your shit and leave now. ED, silent for a moment. How long do I have? I expected a cop to say an hour, a day, something lenient, even though they had been assholes and were breaking the law. What he said next was very satisfying. Cop, five minutes. Get your shit and leave right now or I will arrest you. So ED and TG begrudgedly packed up. Just before they left, cop tell them that if they ever set foot near the property again, BF and I had grounds to have them arrested and charged with multiple felonies. Cops, BF and I were talking and shooting the shit for a bit before him and his partner left as well. Later, the court ruled on our case. We won and ED would have to pay $1,000 to even attempt to appeal. 
We also found out that they stole many of our items, including very important legal documents for the house, and they were never returned to us. ED and TG disappeared, so despite their very best efforts, the cops couldn't retrieve the items either. We are paying out the ass to replace these items and documents. This was many months ago and we are still recovering from it and repairing the house. Sorry for such a long story, but I really appreciate the place to rent. My clothing causes depression in a stranger's kid. I am in my early 20s and I like to wear the gothic emo style since I was about 14. Told you mom, it's not just a face. I own next to no clothing in another color than different shades of black and I really enjoy wearing them. Right now I am in a big city for a schooling for my job and I like to walk instead of taking the subway because it's only 2 kilometers and I have a little bit of exercise that way. Every day I walk past a public playground, yesterday this happened. I walks past the playground listening to music. Suddenly there's a kid in front of me. I see the mouthing so it seems to be talking to me, I take off my headphones. Me. Sorry, I was listening to music and did not hear you. Could you repeat? Kid, 10 to 11 years old. I saw you walking the last few days and like your style. Where do you buy your clothing? I want my mom to buy something like that for me. She proceeds talking about how she wants to be more mature and it seems like she wants to express that with having her own style. I can't translate that without sounding strange in English. Me. Oh, uh, most of it is just vintage stores or cheap clothing that I call it black. There are a few stores that sell that. Sees this scary person in black bothering his precious child. You get away from my daughter. What are you doing? Runs to me and the child, moving her about one meter away from me. Kid, daddy, I want her clothing. It looks nice. She did not bother me. I ask her where she dead. Why would you want to wear all black to me? What did you do to my child to make her wanting those sad clothes? You make her depressive. Get away. I will take her to a psychologist and you will pay for that. Me to the kid. Well, I hope you will find what you like, but maybe wait a little before your parents get angry with me. The style is called gothic if you want to Google it. Dad. Don't you dare talking to my child. You make her depressive. She won't be like you. I just walked away. I know it's not really a great story, but I feel sad for the kid because she really seemed to know what she wants and her dad was so unsupportive. Hopefully her mom is a better person. Note, I experience old people doing crosses and calling me a satanist. I wear a clearly visible cross, but okay. But never had someone claiming that my existence would cause depression. Like, ha. So those were the stories for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, a like would be highly appreciated. It really does help my channel out. Also, if you enjoy this and want to stay up to date on the latest videos, then don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for listening and I will see you in the next video.